Hey guys, welcome to another HOG webinar. Um, as you can see, we are next week, we're actually going to take the week off um, just because it's 4th of July, you know, kind of decompress, get your questions in, all that good stuff. Um, and then the next one we have planned is help, how do I fix this, which is going to be the week after. And that's going to be a big troll, like a troubleshooting, like HOG 4 PC for some reason won't connect to visualizer you can't um my widget how do i connect a widget to hog 4 pc how do i get the wings working um all these wonderful questions that paul and i always get asked we're going to uh be going we're going to be doing that um paul before we jump right into our, today's topic of networking do you have anything to add mm, i imagine that one will be a massive q a as well Mm -hmm. So definitely, uh, definitely come with your like, you know, I've always wondered this or I ran into this. What does it mean or something like that? But yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a definitely good for Q&A type. I mean, that one's going to be definitely like expecting a lot of Q. I'm going to expect a lot of Q&As. And if you can't make it for whatever reason, shoot an email to that support at highend.com and we will get that troubleshooting that you need done into the show and then or into the webinar there we go into the webinar and we'll and then it'll be on youtube for you to go back and watch nice um yeah yeah so that i mean you should always you should always be able to get your questions answered um cool so let's just jump right into so today we're going to go over hognet versus fixture net networking um Kind of like, when do you use it? What do you use it for? That kind of thing. Um, there's a couple of different, I'm going to start off with like the differences between Hognet and Fixture Net. So your Fixture Net is used to control. So your Fixture Net is used to control um, fixtures via Artnet, SACN. You can also use it to control um, video switchers if you need to. There's a couple video switchers that we support natively. Uh, or that hog supports natively, and that's going to be through the fixture net port. Um, and then also fixture net is used whenever you're connecting to a visualizer of any kind. So whether that's capture, um, light converse, uh, WYSIWYG, vision, any of those major ones that we support, or if you're just trying to connect to a visualizer right off of, um, if you're trying to connect to a visualizer using ArtNet SACN, that's going to go through the fixture net port. Now, if you're on a console, you'll have two distinct ports, Hognet versus Fixture Net. If you're on PC, um, sometimes that'll just be one network card, or you might have two separate network cards you can choose. Um, now, the Hognet port is used to communicate between other Hog devices, so like um, Hog 4 to Hog 4 consoles, Hog 4 to Hog 4 PC, Hog to DP8000, DP8000 or DMX processor 8000 or to other, to like open sound control, something you'd use to control your hog. Um, open sound control devices, either apps or actual like built-in device or actual like hardware OSC devices can be used as well. Um, so that's really the two, the main distinction. Fixture net is used to control fixtures of some kind. Hog net is used to control other hog, other hog devices, including DMX processor 8000s. Um, when you are configuring your hog net and your fixture net, you always want to make sure you have different IP addresses for both. So underneath, so before you launch, I always recommend before you launch a show file, you configure these. So you're going to go into control panel. And when you go into control panel, you have two tabs. You have a hog net tab and a fixture net tab. Um, so your fixture net tab. Uh, if you're on PC, you will get the choice to change what your network adapter is. So if you have like an, if you have um, Ethernet, oh, I'm echoing, you just started echoing really badly. Sorry about that. Hopefully that helps a little bit less, a little bit more, and I'll try to talk a little bit quieter. Thank you. Um, so with, um, with on PC, you probably are going to have a choice between your network adapters, um, whether it's an ethernet or your wireless, or maybe you have two ethernet cards put into your computer, then you can choose which one you choose, for, which one's going to be fixture net, which one's going to be hog net. If you don't have two separate cards, they can both be the same on hog 4 PC, it's fine. 
PC is its own special beast. Um, but then you can, for fixture net, you can either use a default IP settings, which is going to put you in a 10 dot range. Um, you can obtain an IP address using DHCP. So if you, apparently it's unintelligible now. Sorry, guys. I love, hopefully that's a little bit better than for the mic. Um, cool. So apparently it sounds better now. Great. We're going to keep going then. Um, cool. So fixture net, you can also obtain an IP address via DHCP. So if you have a router on the line, like sending out, um, IP addresses to everything, then you can use that via DHCP also. Um, and then you don't have to worry about specifying a specific IP address here. Then you can also use custom IP addresses. So maybe you need it in the two dot range to match the rest of your ArtNet gear. Then you can customize this IP address here to be exactly what you need it to be. Same with the net mask. Um, then you have the HogNet tab here. Your HogNet tab is going to be to configure, of course, your HogNet settings. So you'll want this to be in the same range as your other Hog consoles or um, DP8000s or your op open sound control device. Um, you can use a default IP settings, which puts you in a 172 range. You can obtain an IP address using DHCP, or you can um, assign a custom IP address. Now, if you the Hognet, uh, Hognet settings also have the ability to be the DHCP server, so you can set up Hognet to actually broadcast or send out and assign IP addresses to other devices if you need to. Um, I'm going to keep these as defaults. Uh, I mean, as obtain IP address using DHCP for now, because I don't want to lose you guys. Um, so we're just going to keep them the same, but you could change that here. Um, okay. So if we launch into the show, um, I'm going to go into fixture net first, a little bit more of where we can figure ArtNet, SACN, all that kind of stuff right now. And then we'll switch gears a bit more into the HogNet side of things. So inside the Hog4 PC, once you're here, if you're going to go and configure your ArtNet SACN type settings, then you have to go into the network window. So if you hit setup and then network, then you're either presented a spreadsheet view or a, a grid view. I really like this view. It's a lot easier to click and select what you want to edit. Um, so the ArtNet SACN type settings, those are all found on a per processor base. So on the DP8000, that is where you go and adjust those settings. So we click on the DP8000 and then you hit settings here. Now, if you notice, there's also a fixture net tab here. Um, the reason why there's a fixture net tab is because if you have, if you have the, um, if you have like an external DP8000, so a rack mount node, made by high-end systems that can expand 16 universes. It only has three buttons, so it's really hard to configure a 12-digit number. So you can actually, once it's connected via Hognet, you can actually get that on your console and start configuring your fixture net IP address if you needed to. Um, then if you needed to adjust your ArtNet output, you click on the ArtNet output tab and you have your, op your um, options here how this works and where some people where it gets a little bit confusing is are these numbers down here are your hog universe numbers meaning this is where you actually patched the fixture to so my soul spot 2000s are on universes one th are, are in universe one so if i wanted those to go to a different artnet a universe and artnet subnet i just start on this row here because that's where the one is so this is you, where I the fixtures that I patched to Universe One. Then, and, yeah. Hey Megan, sorry. Yeah. No, uh, no, it's fine. It, it kind of. Uh, uh, <clears throat> what's the difference between control panel? The the, the question uh, is what's what's the difference between control panel network and Windows network? Are there any issues using one over the other? Um, in Hog Four PC, there should not be an issue. There should not be an issue using one over the other. In Hog4 PC, I generally like going through the, I like going through the Windows network and change it there, and then launch Hog4 PC. Uh, um, I would I would agree. 
So to get what when I know not everyone here is a Windows user, I will be the first to say I'm not. So the easiest way for me to get those to those network settings is you hit the Windows start button and you can type in network. And then there is going to be the option to go into um, check network status and then you can get into your change adapter options right there. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, right -click I mean, what are the things, right. one of the things, Matthew, because um, I am more of, I am a Windows user, um, in theory, um, you're, whether you're adjusting it in the Windows control panel or the hog control panel, you're effectively changing the settings for the same device, um, mm -hmm. which is why a lot of the times you want to run hog for PC as an administrator. Um, because basically what it allows hog for PC to do is to change those network settings. But I, I do agree with Megan that I, even as a windows user, what I typically do is I set up the either custom configure the IP settings in windows and then launch hog PC. Um, I don't think there's a benefit over one or the other. Um, I don't think so. I've heard in some cases where you have to, if it doesn't take. Like once you do it in Hog4 PC, you have to close it and restart it. Right. So for me, it's just I want to bypass the maybe it doesn't take option and just get and just make sure it does take by going into here and then launch Hog4 PC. Uh, so again, to change that IP address all the way through on this side, you right click on the adapter, hit properties, and you want to change the IPv4 IP address and then click properties. And then you can set it to use the following IP address and type in all those wonderful settings there. Um, Hog does not care about the gateway necessarily. So if you leave that blank, that is perfectly a-okay. Yeah. And Peter, to answer your question, if you use DHCP, DHCP, does the console display the IP address it has received? Yes, it typically does. If mm -hmm. the obtain an IP address has been selected. So if we go to setup and then control panel, you can actually see here, if I go to hognet, it gives me this grayed out box of that is the IP address that I currently have on my home network of 192.168.86.38. So that's what um, my router has given this laptop. Cool. Um. Any other questions before we keep going? Uh, no, I think, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think we're good. Cool. Um, great. So going back into the ArtNet output a little bit more, um, we have our universe, like I said, this is this for column here is your hog universe column. So where, where you actually patched it inside that fixture window. Then you have the broadcast or uh, is going to be checked or unchecked. So are you going to broadcast this, excuse me, this ArtNet signal out to every IP address that matches your IP scheme? Or are you going to type in the specific uh, IP address that this universe should be routed to? So you have like a really large network, you probably want to uncheck broadcast and specifically type the IP address of the node that you're going to send this information to. So if you have um, some kind of, if you have an ArtNet node on 10.002, then and you want to just direct universes one traffic to there you would uncheck broadcast type in 10.0.0.2 and then it would only send universe one via art it would only send the artnet and information for hog universe one to that specific node it wouldn't go to all the other nodes now if you have broadcast checked how um what will happen is it will go to all um, IP addresses that are inside the same IP address range. So in this case, it would all of my ArtNet universes that are enabled are being sent to one, any, any device that has an IP address matching 192.168.86. So as long as those first three segments are the same, then it'll receive that ArtNet information. Um, then next to broad and if you have broadcast checked you won't ever see the ip address that's being sent in um you'll always see like a 255 type number in there meaning that it's being broadcasted out 
Um, then you have your subnet and your universe number. Now these numbers are going to come from your ArtNet node itself. So on the ArtNet node, you might get an ArtNet subnet and ArtNet universe number that you need to match, or you might just get a single universe number, whether this is a primary universe, a principal universe, they are all the same. They are um they are both the the same basically. You need to take that number and make it match here so that the con so that um, we, when we send out the signal, we uh, the node can figure out where what port to route this information to. So, like I know e nodes, they usually just give you a single universe number. You have to then take that single universe number and convert it into an ArtNet subnet and an ArtNet universe number. Um, and you have the options from zero to fifteen for both. And then if the node itself is one based, just make sure you subtract one from, from here. So if it your node gives you one to 16 instead of zero to 15, then one on the node would equal zero in hog. Um, you also have the option to send out changes only if you want to. So maybe if, again, if you have a lot of network traffic here, if you want to minimize some of the network traffic, then you can check changes only. So if you turn on the fixture at full, and that doesn't change, then we only send it out once and we don't we don't keep resending out that same DMX value over and over and over again. Um, the red X is going to disable ArtNet output and then the blue plus sign enables it. If you hit the blue plus sign again on that same universe, you have another option to route it somewhere else, um, which is really useful if you have like two ArtNet, if you have two ArtNet nodes and you need to send universe one to both, then you can do that this way. Um, and once you have those applied, you're going to hit OK. Um, and then now we would be sending out ArtNet information to, uh, to those universes. Any questions over setting up ArtNet? Maybe we'll give it a second to yeah. see if anyone types anything. Yeah. So while people are typing, um, if you can, don't, want to, yeah, no, can you it. can you HTTP or LTP an ArtNet output? Not uh, that I think that having to do with priority. I don't think you can on mm -hmm. ArtNet, but you can on SACN, right? Yeah, on SACN you can't, but ArtNet does not have that built into Hog. Your node, the node that you're using, might be able to do like an ArtNet merge to do HTTP versus LTP, I mean, HTTP and LTP, um, but HOG does not allow you to specify that. Um, while well, more people are typing, maybe. So another way you can get into the uh, to the network window, like I said, you can hit setup and then go to network. You can also click and hold in the middle and then go to network if you need to. Or a really nifty option is you click on the time. If you just tap or click on the time, it's going to open this network window, and it takes one less thing. Uh, Kevin asks in the chat, if Universe 1 is used on two nodes and broadcast is checked, do I still need to double-click the blue add? It depends on if that second node is actually using a, a different subnet in a different universe. So, like... In this case, if I wanted to do go like that second node is on subnet one, then I would need to do that. Um, whereas if they're going both going to zero zero, it should be okay to not to not have to hit the blue add to go somewhere else. All right, let's let's keep going and talk about SACN now, so especially since we're talking about HTTP, LTP things. Um, so inside settings, if you wanted to do SACN out, so like I'm um, going to ETC net nodes, 
or if you have another type of SACN node, then you need to go to your SACN tab and it's set up relatively similar to your ArtNet output tab where you have your universes going down the side, you have your mul and then you have multicast um, and then your IP addresses and all that kind of mapping stuff. Um, so you do have to enable the universes that you want out. And when you hit that plus sign, you then get your options now. Um, so multicast is again saying, I'm going to speak out to the IP address, um, to your to the proper IP address matching whatever's in here. Um, these multicast IP addresses are usually assi are assigned by the um, SACN spec. So you don't usually change these IP addresses because then it the, spe um, the SACN nodes know to filter out specific IP uh, to filter out information that's not coming to you, to this node specifically. Um, then you go if you wanted to talk to specific nodes though you could uncheck multicast and type in those IP addresses if you needed to. Uh, then you can change your universe here. So um, whatever SACN universe you want um, your hog universe to go to, you change that here. Um, you can see when you increase your universe, you're actually in changing your multicast IP address. Again, this is all per the SACN spec and why SACN is a little bit nice because it can route this information for you. Um, Changes are the only, so you can say whether or not you want to send out changes. By default, we have that checked. And then there is a priority option here. So um, SACN can work on a HTTP, pre uh, HTTP precedent, so highest takes priority. Um, so whichever universe has the highest priority is going to win that output. Um, or whichever device is sending out information for this universe is going to win that output. So this is really useful if you have two different consoles that wanna control the same rig. And when I say two different consoles, I mean like you have a hog and an EOS next to each other and you wanna control the same rig. Well, you can say, great hog, you can get so you can get this whenever the EOS is offline and just change your priorities, um, that kind of thing there. You can also go inside a per channel priority as well, where you go in, so once you check this box, you can go into settings and you can change what DMX channel has what priorities. So maybe you actually wanna be even more specific on that output and say, EOS, you have the highest priority over the desk channels. Hog, you have the highest priority over the movers. And you can go and change this up and change which one has highest priority. Now, if the hog goes offline, the EOS can then come back because it'll have highest priority over the movers um, and vice versa. So if the hog goes off, um, if the EOS goes offline, HOG can still come in and take priority over those desk channels if they need to. Um, and this is one of the advantages with using SACN is this priority option right here is that you can uh, start doing an, H an HTTP priority just inside, just based on these settings right here without having to worry about the node doing those SACN priorities. Um, and then you can disable it here with the red X or enable it with the blue plus sign. And just like in ArtNet, you can hit the blue plus sign and get more routings if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. Cool. Um, any, que do, Paul, do we have any questions about SACS? <clears throat> not, not, not yet. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, and the last thing to talk about really inside this window is your ArtNet input, which is also configured via FixtureNet. So if you wanted, um, if let's take this scenario with the EOS and the hog again, if you wanted the EOS to control, have full out control over your DMX. So like for some reason, the EOS doesn't have enough um, channel, enough DMX ports on the back of the console to control all of the universes that you have. Um, and let's imagine you have a hog 418 that has the eight universes on the back. You can actually enable these universes here. So these are going to be controlling the eight universes off the back. You have EOS map to these ArtNet subnets and universes. And now once you hit okay to this first step, your hog has turned into a, um, your hog has turned into a really expensive ArtNet node at that point. 
Um, so your EOS would come out of Ethernet into the your Hogs fixture net, and would be able to do the path and would be able to take the ArtNet input for these specific ArtNet subnets and ArtNet universes for Hog universes one through eight. Now that's the first step in setting up your ArtNet input. The next step into setting up your ArtNet input would be to go into your DMX window and change those settings to be ArtNet and ArtNet input. Um, so to do that, you press setup and then DMX. And then inside here, you go to the universe. So this is on a per DP basis. And then you go on a per D output basis. So output one would be DMX universe one on the back of your console. And then you click and drag on the cells that you want to assign to that ArtNet input. Click and drag, and then you hit the set to ArtNet input button. You'll know they're all set to ArtNet input because they're all nice and red now, showing that they're not set to the hog, listening to the hog console. Um, and then you would do that for each universe that you wanted that other console to control via your hog. And then you can all, and then once you're done with that and you want to go back to the console controlling your your um to the console controlling these universes or these channels specifically, you click and drag on it and hit set to hognet input. They go back to black, and then you are you are able to control again via the console. While the while these universes or these channels are set to artnet input. Your console programmer will do nothing. Your console queue list will do nothing for these universes because they are waiting for input from the other console or from the other source. Is is there a way to quickly disable ArtNet out ArtNet inputs if I were to do a large ArtNet merge with a lot of universes? I wonder if that's a um, a macro situation. You could you could record a macro, and we've done this in the demo room before. Whenever ETC comes in and wants to do um, wants to do demos in between the console from console A to console B, and we don't want to have them all route into DPs because we're not using SACN. Um, so yes, you can you can record a keystroke macro that would open your DMX output window. You click and it selects for you these options and then you hit set to artnet input and that is your key that is one keystroke macro and then you uh, in the keystroke macro record another keystroke macro that selects all the un all the information again and hit set to hognet input to toggle you back that way you have a quick toggle on a quick toggle off you'll definitely need to play with your timings at that point though um, that way you get them exactly like you want them. So it can be as quick as possible, um, but you'll again, you'll want to play with those timings. Um, how do I get HOG4 with a higher priority SACN to relinquish control of channels to a lower priority SACN console? You would need to go into your network settings. I mean, into your DP8000 settings. For those ASAC for that universe specifically, and then go and lower that priority to be lower than your lower uh, console priority. Uh, Stefan's follow-up, or just disable. Uh, Stefan's follow-up: a, a macro without screen screen touch data. Can it be a comment? Uh, uh, no, I think in no. this case you're going to have to do screen. It's it's based on a screen touch. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these type of thing, these type of network settings here are only screen touch available they're not there's no like commands that you can type into the command line to get them so you cannot there is no way to do a macro without it taking over the entire screen for this um yeah and for for the sacn higher priority you're gonna have to um either i would assume just disabling the sacn would also work or um, lowering the priority on the console. So like in the um, ETC Orlando demo room, I actually have this, I have this macro set up specifically where I hit the button once, it goes into my, and it's gonna raise my priority. So it opens the network window, it goes into the DP8000, it clicks in the universe, like exactly like I just did here, types in 
um, one higher than their standard priority. So like it'll be 101, for example. I hit enter and then I close the window and that's this whole, that's one macro. And then there's a give EOS control button, which is another macro that again, opens the network window, goes into setting. I mean, sorry, yeah, that gives EOS control, goes into settings, goes into the SACN, goes in here. We type in zero just to be super low priority. Um, and then we close and zero enter and then we close and then that is the other macro and that's the and that's how we relinquish um, SACN control. Um, Artnet, DMX, SACN can all is all configured on a per processor basis. So Artnet, SACN, if we had another DP8000 in here, like connected to the console, we would have to go and configure configure it for that second DP8000 if we needed to. Um, and it's all, like I said, configured on a per processor basis. So another DP8000 would be ba would be needed. Um, on top of that, also. Um, your Artnet, SACN, and DMX can all three be output at the same time if you needed. So if you needed Universe 1 to be hardline out the back of the console, to be on Artnet and SACN, that is that is doable. That is all, you can have that set up if you needed. Um, they can all, as long as they're in, as long as your Artnet output is enabled here, your SACN output is enabled here, um, we always spit out DMX out the back, so you can't turn that off. So that's always there as well. Um, so you can give, get all three protocols at the same time if you need to. Um, how many universes you have control of via DMX, Artnet, and or SACN is all determined by your specific console that you have. Um, so HOG418s have a max of 16. Um, HOG4s and Rat Hogs also do that. Full Buller 4s have 12, Roadhogs have 8, Hedgehog 4s have 4, Hedgehog 4X has 6, Hoglets and Hog 4 PCs are special. Um, they can have up to 12 unlocked, or if you, and then, but it's really based on how much hardware you have to unlock them. Um, so like if I go into my DMX widgets tab here, this is how you would go and unlock on Hog 4 PC, or uh, yeah, with Hog4 PC, you either have an ETC Nomad key or you have a widget or a super widget that's built into your hoglet or a super duper widget that controls eight universes. Um, so when you have, you would enable the universe um, and then you hit this drop down and you can assign your outputs there. So Hog4 PC can do up to 12 universes of control. Um, and then without any widgets, or Nomad keys, you won't have any type of DMX or SACN or e or Artnet out. Um, so just be aware that these universes are maxed. Once you hit the limit of the console's DMX output or Hog4 PC's DMX output, um, you can connect a, a DP8000 to increase your universes by 12, by 16 universes. Um, so DP8000 is going to give you an extra 16 universes of control. Um, so in this case, if I connected a DP8000 to my HOG4 PC right now, I would have 12 universes plus another processor, so another 16 universes of control. So I would have a total of 28 universes that I could play with on this one PC. Um, and like I said, all of the, um, hot, the only console that you can't actually connect a DP8000 to is a Hedgehog 4. Um, the base model Hedgehog 4 does not have a Hognet port enabled, so uh, you can't go past 16. I mean, you can't go past four universes on the base model Hedgehog 4. Which, if there are no more questions for fixture net stuff, we will talk about Hognet. I think that's a good transition. I, th I think so, so far. Awesome. Okay, so um, like I said, the reasons you'd want to use Hognet are to connect Hog to Hog 
hog the DP8000s or, ho- or processors or hog to open sound control devices. Um, so like hog to hog communication can be used for uh, tracking consoles. So if you have console A and console B and you want them to mirror one for one, be on the same page, have the faders be at the same level, that kind of stuff, then that is when you'd use Hognet. Um, you can also use it as uh, remote programming stations if you need to. So like as long as you're connected via Hognet, you could have one in the booth and one on set if you needed to. And they could be running separate pages, but still be in the same show file. So it's the same patch, the same show objects, like groups, palettes, all that good stuff can still be done. Um, and when I say hog to hog, I also mean hog to hog for PC. So if you have um, like a hog 418 and then you have a hog for PC, you can actually u- control your hog 418 via your hog for PC if you needed to. Um, a lot of people like to do that as a wireless remote sometimes so you would hook up a router to your hognet port um and have your hog4 pc and have your windows laptop or tablet or whatever that's running hog4 pc connected to that router and then you have hog4 pc with you as you're wandering around the set or the stage or whatever you're on so just because i say hog to hog doesn't mean it has to be an actual console console it can also just be a piece a hog4 pc system um so if you're trying to connect hog to hog once you have the ip addresses what's really necessary is um your ip addresses need to be in the same range for hognet so um hog one would be like 172.31.0.1 your hog two would be 172.31.0.2 for example um so in your control panel like i said before you go into your Hognet tab, and then you can adjust your, D- your IP settings here if you needed to. Then, from your control panel, you also need to make sure that the consoles are running the same port number. Um, so to access your port number, you go into Settings. And then you'll see that there is a port number option here. So these port numbers are how the hog knows what... So a show file always runs on a port number. So if this show file is running on 6600 and I want my other console to connect to that show file, then I have to connect it to, I also have to make sure that console is going to run the show file on 6600. Um, that way they just, the, the servers themselves on both consoles or the uh, know to connect to each other. So the, the port number is going to be what decides what you are connect, what show file you're connecting to. If console A has 6600 and console B has 6601, then console B will not see that there is a show on console A to connect to. Um, so once you have the same port number, and I don't have a, I don't have a second console set up to connect here. Um, the other console is running a different software version. Um, so if you're on, if you're trying to connect two consoles together you'll want to make sure that you are running the exact same software version. So because this computer is running 3.13.1, you would want to make sure the console or the other computer you're connecting to is also running HOG 4v3.13.1. They have to, if they don't have the same show file version, uh, same software version, they will not connect. And this goes the same for if you're connecting DP8000s. They always have to have the same software version. Yeah. If I'm if I'm running through a firewall, do I need to open up the console port number? Um, or are well, they different from network ports? I I think I think that's. Uh, I think you would need to open. Yeah, up I think the I think so too. Number. I haven't done that. We <clears throat> suggest running through a firewall at all. Right. Honestly, like we say, I mean, it's one of the troubleshooting that we go through. Like if we're troubleshooting with a person. Like disable your firewall. That way, there is no um, ports that are being blocked and stuff like that. Um, so I think you would need to open up that console port number as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stefan says uh, I so fell victim to the 13.0 and 13.1 thing. <laughs> yes. Always make sure you are running the same software version. Uh, sometimes with corporate IT, I have to run through a firewall. Yeah, it, it it's tricky. It's tricky with corporate IT networks mm-hmm. and everything. Um, 
Yeah, there's yeah. For, at that point you you're, you're dealing with managed switches and managed networks and everything like that. So I think you have to really work with the with the the, the IT person to be like you know, because uh, every every IT person I think sees hog traffic and thinks it's a threat um, mm -hmm. on the network. So it's something that it's like you have to communicate and really work with. I mean, typically I've what I've seen I, IT people do is they will open up a, you know, a a specific range network range on the managed switch and allow you to run the hog four PC and that on that on that specific managed section of the switch. But again, it's it's constant communication with uh, the IT people. Yeah, I mean, and how. Yeah, like Paul said, just be in constant communication with them so that they know specifically what network to be out of. If they're asking for ports and and if stuff isn't working and they're asking for specific ports, you can always give us a call and we will probably be able to communicate with our research and development team to find out exactly what port numbers you need unlocked to make this work. Um, Peter, once consoles are connected, uh, is the show file stored and updated on both consoles, or is one console the master holding the actual show file? Um, that's actually a really good question, and it it depends on how you have them set up. Right. So if you if you click on the settings button, there is an option here for run server. So if you have run server checked then on both consoles, then they each actually hold a, a copy of the show file. Um, so they can, if you update one show file, it updates on the other. Now, if you have run server unchecked on one console, then it is purely a client to that other console, to that console that's running the show file with run server checked. Meaning it doesn't have a local copy of the show file. If the server show file if the server goes offline, that client so that client console is going to be kicked off the network as well, um, because there's no more server running, um, so it has nothing to connect to. So it's a it depends on how you have it set up, type situation. Um, like I said, run server checked. They're going to, you get two two show files being served on both con saved on both consoles. Um, Weird things can happen sometimes though with run server checked, like um, where show files, this is a little bit of a like caution to it and make sure you know what you're doing because if run servers checked and show files get a little bit out of sync on them both, there is um, gonna be a way you're, you might, you might have a show file corruption issue happening um, which is why, like, whenever we did the thing with Scott Barnes, he, uh, and which is on the YouTube, the webinar with Scott Barnes, and that's on the YouTube if you need to, he usually deals with there's only one server, and he fixes the rest of his consoles via client for the, for the, uh, whatever movie or set he's on. That way, the show file is only being backed up into at one place, and there's no chance for, like, that data corruption to happen. Um, Yeah. So I think that would slightly answer that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. Um, and this is also all to say the same for DP8000. So if you're trying to connect a DP8000 in line, that is also another thing you need to do is in settings, make sure that your port numbers are also the same for that DP8000. Um, and before you launch the show, Another thing that you have to do is in the net number is you have to decide what net number you use. So if you want consoles to track, meaning you want consoles to have the same page number, you want the faders to be the same when you change pages, you want the pages to follow, then you need to make sure that your net numbers are the same. So you'd have like two consoles on net number one and your pages stay in line. If you have two separate console net numbers, then um, then they can be on separate pages and still work with the same show file. So still have access to the same pages, lists, shows, groups, all that kind of, or not shows, uh, lists, scenes, groups, palettes, all those show objects um, will, will still be accessible if you have different net numbers. It's just you're not tied to the same page number at that point. Um, DP8000s also have net numbers. So if you want to have an extra 16 universes of a control from your console. So I want another 
DP8000, so I want 12 plus 16. Then you'll want to make sure that external DP8000 has a different net number than your internal DP8000. That way you have extra universes at that point. You have another uh, processor. Whereas if they have the same net number, they're going to be wanting to run the same patch and everything because you patch on a per processor basis. Can you explain uh, that show file corruption thing again on the next pause? Um, yeah, I'll do that. I'll try to do that here now. Um, so if you have, um, I, I've seen it before, like where a console goes down and then it, like the network get, gets like unplugged for some reason, you plug it back in. Well, now the console, the console that stayed in line with that network the entire time might have new changes whereas the other console doesn't. And if for some reason they are now on two separate show files, then they don't stay synced completely. Um, so therefore console B, the one that got unplugged, no longer is kind of, no longer has a full backup and is no longer able to completely track what's going on from console A. Um, and if you were to log off console B, the one that got unplugged and has the corrupt show file now, then um, and log back on with that with that other show file, then you would not have a um, you would not have all those changes that happened before. So you would kind of be where you were previously. Now it takes a while. I'll be honest. It takes a while to get into that show state. That show state. Um, that corrupt show file corruption state. It it can happen. I've seen it happen. But you're also talking to someone who does support. So like. It doesn't happen that often, but it is off. It is something that to just be a little bit cautious of whenever you're running both shows with two servers, whenever you're running two consoles with both servers. I don't know if that helped answer Matt's question. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it, it the you get down a you get down a rabbit hole really mm -hmm. quickly here, um, because I mean, it, it it's based on you know w when the console might be writing show data to 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 the disk um, versus what kind of interruption it happens. I mean, it's it gets it gets it get it can get flaky really quickly. It it does, and it's and it's really hard to determine like when exactly it's going to happen. Um, so yeah, exactly. Like if it's in the middle of a write, and of course a network gets unplugged, and that could be an issue there. Um, I can tell you the last time I was trying to hunt down one of these issues, I probably tried. I was up there in research and development for maybe two hours, literally restarting a show file, plugging and unplugging at just the right moment before I finally got it to happen once. So I'm not going to say it happens all the time. I was just putting out a caution that like sometimes run server on both is good. Um, if you're trying to do a backup console, my suggestion though, to avoid any type of corruption like this whatsoever, is to instead of running server, I mean, instead of connecting them via Hognet, what you could do is set up a MIDI show control between both consoles because um, Hog automatically sends out MIDI show control signals every time you change a page, hit go, hit pause back and release, I believe. Um, there's a list, there's an actual list in the manual. But if you have everything set up between MIDI show control from console A to console B, then when you change a page, it's going to keep console B up with the same page, up with the same queue list going. And if they're then connected via SACN, like that's your common background is the SACN, not the Hognet network, then you don't have to worry about any type of corruption at that point. You are able to actually, so when console A goes down, console B is able to just pick right back up because the SACN network is still in play. Um, that would that that would be a workaround from trying to run server on both and keep the backups going. Um, the console back comes back on. Sorry, I see the Q and A's here. Okay, I was, um, gonna, I was gonna say it just it just happened. Yeah, when the console comes back online, will it pull the show file off the console, or will other console, or will it come, just come online? Um, I've seen it just come online where it no longer responds or it gets into like a, you have to completely restart the console. Like the show server has failed and you just have to completely restart the console. Then it might be able to pull out that new one. Um, it's 
uh, it might be able to pull over the show file, but you'll want to make sure you delete that old show file first so it doesn't, so the consoles both aren't trying to figure out which one was the last one to use. Um, for show, for true redundancy, you would need both servers activated, but on the other hand, that could be the potential issue of a show crashing. I guess that's choosing between. Yeah, so for true redundancy, um, you do need both servers activated. But for true redundancy, I don't know if I want to rely on a network type. At some point, you have to rely on which one to push down, like what network you're going to rely on. Are you going to rely on your the one that's serving all your DMX? Or are you going to rely on just like console to console? Like, I mean, it just kind of depends where you're prepared. For, I mean, this is getting into where are you prepared and comfortable for that failure? But yes, for true redundancy, if you're trying to do a true tracking backup with two consoles, run server has to be checked on both consoles. Matt, MIDI is genius. I'm going to start that. MIDI, MIDI was a good workaround for all of this. I mean, for, for that kind of stuff to keep in, in, in line. Cool. Um, once you have all those settings done with your hog to hog, you can see right here there's a connect to show option. This button will, if there's another console online and a show is launched, then this button will say that show file that's connected. So you will see like, um, like if I was doing this in a training class, it would say training right here. And then I could just click on it and it would launch me inside that show file specifically. If you're trying to connect to DP8000, there's not going to be a show here to connect to. You just launch your show file, and on the deep front of the DP8000, it'll say, hey, I'm connecting to the show server. I've been connected. Here's my net number. And it is going to appear right next to this DP8000 and with the, excuse me, with the proper net number. And so that'll give you your extra 16 universes of control. Everything that I'm talking, like I said, everything that I'm talking about, even though I'm mentioning consoles, it all applies to Hog4 PC. Um, so anything you're doing on console applies to Hog4 PC. Um, I guess any questions before we keep? keep yeah, Stefan had a uh, Stefan had a. If you run time code, how would that work with a MIDI with with with, with MIDI and backup? Um, because your time code would come in through the. Are you? I mean, console. if you were if you were using linear time code, you'd you'd. Have, I mean, that would be that's a different widget, so in a different map. Right, and I that suppose. would go through MIDI <clears throat> config here. Yep. Uh, or yeah, MIDI config here. You choose, and that would go there. You could do a. I was actually. It's funny. I was just talking to someone about this like yesterday. Actually, they called me. Um. You could send the time code to both. I mean, like if you, I mean, I guess you could technically like do like a time code to both inputs and just have, that's how, um, well, you, I, I think you would need a secondary widget, like a secondary uh, USB to MIDI widget in there and set up another um, input. So you have one for the MIDI show control if you're doing the MIDI backup and then one for the MIDI time code so that you have two MIDI inputs. Uh, Stefan, Stefan, yeah, I, I think that's it. Uh, the DP8000 runs time code question. Um, I think it runs linear time code. I don't think it does MIDI yeah. time code. Yeah, it can do linear time code. I don't think it does MIDI time code. MIDI time code has to come through the desk. Yeah. When the, if you use the MIDI route, when the main goes down, will the information from the backup pass through the downed main into the DMX network? Um, when the main goes down, will the information from the backup pass through? Uh, so your show files aren't connected at that point. So there is no inf show file information to pass through. So this would be like if you have um, console A over here, console B over here, and they're just connecting fixture net to your ArtNet or SACN, and right. console A and B are connected via via MIDI. There is no uh, link, so there's no show file information to pass between the two. Yeah, you're starting, Matt. You're starting to head down the road of a, a true like A B, you know, mm -hmm. A B, you know, console setup where you, you know, where you have, 
you know, DMX, two, two sets of DMX coming out into an AB switch type deal. Mm-hmm. Or do you need a backup in the DMX network as well? Oh, okay. There is another follow-up. Um, do you need a backup to the DMX network? Well, I mean, it just how far do you want to back up, I guess, is another thing. Like, you could go the whole route, like Paul was saying, with an A-B switch where you just flip. Like, you have a whole other network that you can switch between for your DMX. Or you, or like you just trust your SACN nodes to not fail, and that's where you're like merging. That's where you let the HTP or LTP or um, take precedent and handle which console it's listening to. Um, if you add another MIDI timecode, then QList is still pointing to the original MIDI endpoint. Will that work? Oh, that's true. Well, you could have on that side, if you're going through, we're still talking about MIDI to MIDI, right? Control, not like two networks, two networks consoles. Um, if you have the MIDI coming in on that second console, you could have it, have that, since they're two separate things, have that um, queue list. Oh, sorry, I'm going to record a queue list real quick. You could have that queue list here, time code source, be that console one, index one, and be specific. And then you have you could have it listen still. Um, I don't know if that would. I think that would help. Mid, MIDI is where things get a little bit more weird. Um, and if you're just doing LTC in, then your D, your DP8000 could be what holds the backbone of your MIDI. And that way, they're, we're just listening to that MIDI coming in. I mean, not your MIDI, but that's what's listening to your time code coming into your desk. Your linear time code. Because then you can choose that guy instead. And then your time code is going to be the same here, simulated and then your DP8001 would be the same across the whole network if you're sharing DPs. Oh, I don't know if that would work, but that might work. Stefan, if you're running into a real issue, give me a call. <laughs> I guess is going to be the next thing. Um, and we can we can try to work it work it a little bit better. Also, it'll be easier for me to look into these things once we're at the off once we're back to able to be into the office where I have a lot more gear than a PC and a full bore. We can chat later. Cool. Um, anything, any other questions before we, do, before we talk about setting up OSC a little bit? All right, I'm going to jump into OSC real quick um, because that is another networking protocol. Um, so, so OSC stands for Open Sound Control. Um, so there's a ton of different apps. There's a couple different apps out there, iOS versus Android. I don't. I'll be honest. I don't know what apps are out there for Android. I'm sure there are. I know there's a Touch OSC app for Android that we can have um, template that we have templates that support, and you can customize and upload your own templates for. But it's an um, open sound control can be used to control your console. So we have a bunch of OSC mappings that control the front panel of the console and that control like cute list scenes, um, macros. You can find all the mappings inside the, at the end of the manual um, in chapter 22. And there's a whole list of OSC ma mappings. Um, now there's a, there's different iOS apps and usually people use this to get um, like their iPad, iPhone or Android phone or Android tablet tablet to be able to control your console as a remote focus unit. So you can walk around on stage with your phone in your pocket and then pull it out and start to be able to to type and select the lights and cause them to move and stuff like that. 
Um, so it's a pretty flexible protocol because it's all done over the network. It's all done over Hognet network. Um, most of the time you're connecting via with a router on the back of your, excuse me, with a router connected to your Hognet port. Um, and then you have your device that's connected to that, um, to that router as, at the same time. So if you're trying to connect OSC to your console, you click on the con, it's all done to console settings. So you click on console, you go to settings, and then you go to open sound control. Um, and you have these two port numbers here. So you have port one, an input port or an output port. Um, depending on which app you're using, you actually get to this, you, you might have to flip these to where in the, like on Touch OSC, your output port on the iPad is going to match the input port on your device. Um, you make sure to enable them in. You usually want your input and your output port to be two separate I, two separate port numbers because they're two separate, um, basically, servers to communicate on. And then you have your IP address here, and that's going to be the IP address of whatever device you have. Um, so if this was like, it would be like the IP address of your iPad if you needed it to be. Um, so you could type in 192.168.86.43 here. Um, and then basically, as long as these are enabled and you have them matching on your device, you hit OK. And now your console can be controlled via your iPad if you need it to be, um, which, which is nice and nifty in that respect. Um, and it's really that easy to get OSC communicated. It's always over a network. So you're always going to have to go into your network settings, go into console, and then go into your open sound control and then configure these settings based on whatever, however the app needs it to be. Cool. Um, I guess any questions over that kind of stuff? And I see Paul got a question in the chat. Um, if I have a DP8000 connected to a full board via Hognet, will the DP8000 then output Artnet or SACN via its fixture net port? Can I configure Artnet output via the DP or the full board? Um, you can. So Those effectively happen separately or individually. Yeah. yeah so um, if you have a DP8000 connected to your console, then and you want to output fixture net from both your console and your and your DP, your DP has a fixture net port on the back, you'll have to make sure that they both get connected to your console, to your fixture net network. Um, if you only have fixture net coming out of the DP8000, then make sure your DP8000 fixture net is connected to the fixture net network, your ArcNet or SACN network. Um, your, 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 um, Fixture net ports act independently of each other. And so that ArtNet and SACN information coming from the DP8000 does not get communicated back to the console. So you'll want to make sure that that DP8000 fixture net is connected where it needs to be to receive that information. It's connected to your ArtNet or SACN nodes. Can you use OSC input through TCP? Uh... I know we support it on the output. I believe we support it on the input. I just want to double, I, I don't know if we mention it in here. Mm, of course we don't. I, be, I believe you can. There are some, I, I believe, yes, I believe you can. I believe if I take touch OSC and don't have touch OSC here, do I? No, I don't. Um, but you should, you should be able to send out, send in T TCP. If you have any issues with that, Matthew, again, shoot us an email, um, support at highend.com and we will be able to help you out with that. Uh, I know we can send OSC output via TCP. Um, you have the options. Right here, instead of UDP, you have TCP um, with SLIP or TCP with HDR. I'll be honest, I don't know the differences between SL between SLIP and HDR, um, but I do. But 
they are two options that we support for sending OSC out. Uh, and going back a little bit to that DP8000 question, can I configure ArtNet output via the DP8000 or the full bore? Um, it, to configure ArtNet on, a DP8, on an external DP8000, you do need to come into this network window at some point. So you innate, you'll see it listed here. It'll just be another box. It'll say, um, it'll just be another box or another row if you're, and it'll say whatever the net number is. You click on it, you hit settings, and then you'll have your option here to configure your art net output. At some point you do have to come to the console. You can configure on screen on the external DP8000, the fixture net port if you want to, but you can also do it on the console. It's a bit bigger buttons if you need it to be. Um, on, on the console. Um, and now I am open for all Q and A. Um, some OSC apps, uh, I'll just fill in the time while we wait for questions to come in, but some OSC apps for iOS. Um, there's touch OSC, which on the high end website, I have the ability to do that here. Chrome. Um, so on the high-end website underneath the console products, hog floor consoles, if you go in here and underneath any of the consoles, you'll have this third-party tools. And there's the Touch OSC software that'll take you to its website. And then the templates. These templates, yes, they say iPhone or iPad, but they also work for Android. It's just the resolution may be a little bit scaled or a little bit funky, but it should they should work the exact same. If you go to the Touch OSC website, you have your features, images, all that kind of stuff, the download options. Um, what's cool about Touch OSC is that you can make your own custom layouts. They have a, um, there is an editor you can get for the layouts um, so that on your computer, you can actually like, make a different layout. If you didn't like any of the standard ones that we include, you can make one that literally just has a giant go button. And when you press it, it presses the master go button on your on your console. Um, are you still not able to use some buttons and faders on hog for PC through OSC? Some items do not work. Um, yeah, so OSC with hog for PC is a little different. Um, with with uh, how it stands right now, if you wanted access to the buttons and the faders of the front panel in Hog4 PC, you would either need an ETC Nomad key, the unlocked version, so the one that has all 12 keys to unlock here, or you would need a um, or you would need a hoglet attached. You would need some kind of Hog4 wing. And that will give you access to the encoder wheels and the faders. Um, and, and I think the buttons are actually unlocked without a nomad key popped in. Let's see, did I just ruin it? Um, let's see, hold on. Yeah, uh, I could be wrong. So one, okay, so one at full. Yeah, so actually the buttons themselves are unlocked. So you can use numeric keypad, the intensity, position, color, get feedback back. You just can't actually use the fader control or the encoder wheel control without the nomad key plugged in. Um, or without a hoglet also attached to your hoglet also unlocks it as well. Um but you still get feedback out, all that kind of stuff you get out. Um, so that is something to be aware of. You can also still get control over um, lists and scenes as well um, from your OSC without a hoglet attached. So, it, I mean, it's a really good, like, a, there's a really good, um, you get a lot of you get a lot of features without actually having hardware attached to hog for PC. Um, yeah, and there's, so I'll get to the other uh, iOS apps as well. Um, so there's Hog4 Remote, which Hog4 Remote 
is also a good remote. I don't I don't like it as much as um, Touch OSC because it didn't look as nice on my on my iPad. Um, that's the only reason. But it looks very similar to your console. You're already familiar with it. The buttons look the same as PC buttons, so it's nice that way. Um, it's a it's a good device. It has this pig trigger button, which is like the whole same thing as holding down pig and spinning the encoder wheels. It gets you a better um, grasp of the encoder wheels that way, which is kind of nice. Um, and then this is their uh, pig trigger is an extra feature that you can buy through this app. And what that'll do is you can set scenes and lists to be able to be fired and put pictures and stuff on it. Um, there's one other app for, let's see. Um, there it is. We'll do that one. There's one other app I actually wrote. Paul always says for me to plug it, so I'll plug it. Okay. Should. There's one other app that I wrote that's a lot more just iOS, like looks like it would be on iOS versus on iPad. This is not, all of these apps that I'm showing right now are not made by high end or kept up by high end. Um, the, this one is, I mean, they all do the same thing. They all control the iPad via, I mean, they all control the console via iOS and via touch OSC for these three. Like I said, unfortunately, I don't know any for Android. Um, the nifty thing with this app in particular is that you can have your groups and palettes here as well. Um, can I not? So like this is a whole thing of groups and palettes here also that you can go in, renumber, change the colors, all that kind of stuff that you can not do. I don't think you can do in the other apps. I, I know at one point you could not do it in the remote app, in the Hog4 remote app. Um, that was, I don't know if they've added it since, since I've looked at it last. Um, but it, I mean, they all take in, they all take in information from the console, like to get your, um, the right kind key pressed, your command key info, um, fader feedback, all that kind of stuff. And they all send out that information as well when you need to. Um, and again, like I'll say again, these are all third-party tools. They're not supported by high-end systems. Um, even the one that I wrote is not supported by high-end systems. It's just something that, that I did on the side because I wanted to be able to control um, scenes and palettes through it as well. Um, so the only one I guess that is technically supported by high-end that high-end recommends is the Touch OSC since we actually linked to that on the website. Cool. Um, any other questions, guys? It's a little quiet today. I know. <clears throat> That's okay. I, I know people are starting to trickle back into work and trickle back into like their normal routine at this point. Um, so it's, to it's totally fine. I just want to make sure we don't miss anything. Why doesn't have an RFU app out there, out here? Um, are you asking why isn't there, like, why doesn't High End specifically make an RFU app? I don't know. He started with an LOL, so I'm not sure if that's yeah. a. I couldn't get the ArtNet output from. I couldn't get the ArtNet output from the DP8000 to work on a job earlier this year. Ended up running DMS outputs from the DP, but we're trying to merge ArtNet into their Grand MA2 and it wouldn't see ArtNet. Um, you would pro why doesn't high end have an RFU app? Um, so let me answer Bud's question. Well, not really a question, but make a statement to that. I don't Something to make sure of with the stuff when going into the MA is that your ArtNet subnet and ArtNet universe numbers are right. Um, so if you have settings here, make sure you got your ArtNet output subnet and universe numbers are right. I also found out that MA likes hex numbers instead of 
your just zero to 15 numbers, like instead of decimal numbers sometimes. So you'll want to make sure that conversion is also right. Um, but that if these are all set up correctly, you should get ArtNet output and make sure that you actually have them enabled. You should get ArtNet output to be read by any type of ArtNet node, whether or not it's another console wanting that ArtNet and wanting to read in that ArtNet. Um, now to Scott, so why doesn't high-end have an RFU app? Um, I would answer that as, I mean, we, we felt like touch OSC was a really interesting, um, alternative to, uh, to doing that. It gave people some flexibility. I like that answer. I'll go with that. Um, I mean, we can't specifically say why it was or was not, like, and why we do or don't. But, I mean, Touch OSC is super flexible. Like I said, you can go and customize the templates however you want. Um, and then with it being open sound control, with the backbone of this being open sound control, anyone could honestly go and make their own app or make their own interface that they want. Um, there's a couple programs on Windows that you can download even that will connect via OSC. Um, if you want anything special like that, it also gives you the ability to like hook up QLab or um, Touch Designer or something else that can speak out OSC and have the have it fired through there. So again, I can't exactly say why we don't, but I can say that with it being OSC, it gives the opportunity for uh, more connections to come in and to be specifically for what you want. I mean, you could make something specific to what you wanted. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh, see you later, Peter. Bye, Peter. Thanks for thanks for coming around. See you in on July 9th. I do like OSC. I mean, I I like being able to run it from a, a device that's not the computer if I don't have hardware attached. Um, and once the ETC, once we supported that ETC Nomad key, it worked. It it was really nice because then I didn't have to have a hoglet on my desk at work. I just plugged in the Nomad key, and it's just a USB dongle plugged into the side of my laptop, and it's and I hook up my iPad, and everything works as expected. And then if I need to, I have ArtNet in it. I have 12 universes of ArtNet and SAC and out. Cool. I think we are pretty much done then. Unless anyone else has any other networking questions yeah there's not a unfortunately in network there's not a lot of shiny bells and whistles and and fun things it's mm -hmm. it's a little this is this is one of our more dry subject matters yeah there's not a lot to show too much really um besides like this is kind of in theory how you do it of course joey no problem I'm hoping these help. This helps you take on. I'm hoping when we get calls now, no one is actually saying when I broadcast this check and has a weird IP address. We all know why that IP address has two five fives now, and is sending out to all IP addresses in that network range. All right, I'm going to get that screen up then. Probably be st stop recording at this point, I think. Yep. And remember, guys, we're not doing a webinar next week, but the week after we will be doing the help. How do I fix this? Uh, make sure that if you have any other ideas of what you want to do for more webinars or maybe there's more questions that we need to get answered. 
um, or you have some troubleshooting that you need help with, make sure tune in to July 9th and we'll get you going there. Um, again, thanks everyone for sticking around. Paul, anything else? No, thanks guys. Thanks for playing along. Yay.